What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. And we're dropping our second episode for today. And this, we're going to be debunking a lot of the concepts around the Chicago Bulls blowing it all up, going over uh, comments from freaking Charles Barkley. And we're going to look at what could be some realistic trade targets for the Chicago Bulls if they do look to add to the team and retool rather than rebuild. We're going to get to all that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. All right, Bulls fans. So as many of you guys have known by now, Charles Barkley came out with a comment and just said the Bulls should just blow it all up. Restart. It's time. The door code is this. It's time to break up the Chicago Bulls. Blow it up. It's time. It's time to start the rebuild and start over. Now. Here's one of the things, right? And, you know, Charles Barkley goes on to do some of the typical fan mindset when it comes to, oh, uh, trade everybody for draft picks, right? We've been de- 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 debunking the fact that the Bulls are not going to blow it all up. It's not happening, people. For anyone who still thinks, and now, and uh, as I've said before, as Bulls fans, they, people get so caught up in this parrot-like mindset. The moment that Bill Simmons came out with that thing of the Bulls should blow it all up, all Bulls fans do anytime anything goes, blow it all up. It's such a parrot-type mindset. It's ridiculous. Same thing happened last year with Jeremy Grant. Happened again after that with Miles Turner. Like, it's just, and we can go on and on and on. You remember when it was Rudy Fernandez? This is a deep cut. And when it was that, that it was, oh, the Rudy Fernandez would be the perfect fit. And then all of a sudden, Bulls fans, we need Rudy Fernandez. Can we get Rudy Fernandez? Like, Stop with the idiocy, idiocracy. Like, just stop it. It's like, it's stupid. The Chicago Bulls are not blowing it up. Now, that doesn't mean they're not retooling, right? I will say that. It does not mean that this Chicago Bulls team may not look to use the expiring Vooch contract. It does not mean the Chicago Bulls, if it does become available, may look to move on from Kobe White. It doesn't mean that there's not going to be a retool. And we'll talk about some realistic options if the Bulls do look to retool at the end of this. But it's not happening. The rebuild, the quote-unquote blow it all up, it's not happening. Now, again, by that I do mean during this season. It could be if the Bulls completely miss out the playoffs, everything's on the table by then. But even then, I doubt that they do a full rebuild, meaning trading Zach, like, trading Zach Levine is the signifying of a full rebuild. Until that happens, it's not going to happen. And Woj has even said this, that certainly that, uh, Zach Levine is not an option. He isn't on the trade market. This Chicago Bulls team is not, quote unquote, blowing it all up, despite what some fans may think, only because it was said before, despite what some analysts may think. No, is this Chicago Bulls team a championship contender? No. I think we all know that that's been firmly established. Hell, we're trying to get back into the conversation of being a, a playoff candidate, much less a championship contender. But it does not make any sense at all, logically, to blow it all up when you don't own your own first round pick outright. I said this before. I'm going to say it again for anybody who's getting ready to type on this. It, it, find me a team that, quote unquote, blew it all up and went full rebuild in a year. They did not own their own first round draft pick. You won't find one, right? Unless that team goes out and trades with a team to get another first round pick. And guess what? This Bulls team, anybody who's going to be interested in trading for DeMar DeRozan, or Nikola Vucevic, or hell, even Zach Levine, if he did magically become available, is going to be a contending team. You know what that means? If the Bulls do get a first-round pick back for that team, that pick is not going to be in, in the lottery. It's not going to up your chances to get Victor Wimbiana. It's not happening, right? And we always hear at Chicago Bulls Central try to preach logic. And I know for some fans, and for me at times, right, I'm going to put myself to the, to the, to the market with this as well, Sometimes, as fans, we are so attached, we, we're so just ingrained in this team that we lose all sense of logic. It's not happening. It's not. Like, it's not. A full rebuild is not happening. Again, a retool is on the table, and it should be for a team that is not right now in playoff contention. Now, this all could go out the w- window, right? Looking at how this season could go for the Chicago Bulls, if they do start playing better and it becomes something solid as far as their style of play, then they're definitely not going to to rebuild, retool, or anything. That's if that happens. That's a far if right now, and that has to be proven by the way that the Chicago Bulls play. That's in their control. But even if this team 
by the trade deadline is still is still underperforming, right? If if we can label that underperforming and it's still outside the playoffs, this team could look to do an injection of talent in some type of way by using some of their contracts, using some of their veterans, but it's not going to be by this mystical all of a sudden, and again, if you're getting ready to type in this comment section, oh, well, trade DeMar for first-round picks from who? Right? It's easy just to say in a vacuum, oh, let's do this. Let's trade this and get first-round picks. Let's trade DeMar and Vooch to get AD. It's not happening. I've tried to tell you guys this stuff last season, and then I tried to tell you again this offseason with some of the moves that you guys were hoping the Bulls were going to make. It's not realistic. And you can believe me or not, I'm not expecting everybody to agree with me. And I'm not saying that I'm wholeheartedly right either. I am right about a full rebuild not coming. I'll take that to the bank. A retool is definitely possible. A retool is possible. When you look at the fact that Vooch has not signed a contract extension, if you get to the trade deadline and the Bulls are still iffy on what Vooch, unless they've talked to Vooch and, you know, that Vooch understands and they all but assure that they can work something out in the offseason. But they may look to do something there. For the Bulls fans that also are of the mindset, the Bulls should look to trade DeMar DeRozan while his value is hot. I understand that mindset too. Still highly unlikely that it happens. But if that were to happen, again, that is a retool, not a rebuild, not a blow it all up. Now, one of the things that is an issue with this team is the utilization and the development of the younger players, right? We know Io has not had a lot of opportunities to develop. He has been a starter, but when you look at the offense and the way he gets shots, Hasn't had a lot of opportunity. Patrick Williams, some due to himself, some due to the coaching scheme, hasn't had a lot of opportunities to grow that point forward type um, ball that we've seen that he can play at times. Regardless if you want to say because of DeMar or whatever, well, this ain't a video to diagnose that, but I understand that, right? This team, and, and Dale, or even the rookie, and Dalen Terry, who's shown some promise, in, especially in the G League, isn't playing a lot of minutes. This team is still geared right now and trying to make the playoffs. You got Lonzo Ball still. They don't know what's going on with Lonzo Ball, whether he's coming or going, things like that. With that being said, despite what Charles Barkley said, who literally just speculates, if you guys don't know, I'm sorry if this is offensive. You know what? No, I don't care if it's offensive. Charles Barkley is not that intelligent of a person. He's not that smart of a human being. He's just not. So you can't take that. The Bill Simmons thing, I've already said that and broke that down. Bill Simmons, with the way that he does a podcast, if you learned, listen to Bill Simmons long enough, you know it's a stream of thought from Bill Simmons more times than not. He just gets to going and doesn't really sit down and think all this out because some of the trades he proposed just aren't available in the salary, uh, in, due to the salary cap or uh, due to the collective bargaining agreement. It's just not uh, eligible to happen. So when you look at this team and you look at the concept of going full rebuild, I'm glad that Woj has come out and said, somebody who is valid, that, hey, Zach Levine is not on the market right now. They've, we've already heard as well last week. DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine are quote-unquote untradeable when it comes to the Chicago Bulls. They are not, untouchable is the word, right? They're untouchable. They're not looking to move those contracts. They're not lo looking to move those players. So while a retool is possible, I'm telling you right now, if your hopes are on that this Bulls team is going to go full rebuild and just trade everyone, Zach Levine included, you're going to be in for some for some hurt feelings because it's not happening. And again, keep in mind what I'm saying here. I'm not even giving and saying what I want to happen. I'm saying what the logical outcome of this stuff is. It's not happening. Now, when you factor in the fact of a possible retool, a possible of, of just trying to find a different mix of players that can add something to this team while this team does try to get on track for the playoffs, which is a more realistic option for the Chicago Bulls, there are, there are three players that I look at if the Bulls really want to try to retool this roster but keep most things intact. Just try to get some in, some different faces, some different talents, some players that do some different things. One of the first ones, I have keyed in on three different players. One of the, the, the and I call them pivot players. That's what we're going to call them, right? Because it's pivoting. It's not going full rebuild. It's going retool. It's kind of pivoting the direction that this team is going and looking at that. One of the targets that it could be for the Chicago Bulls is one that we've talked about all season long. That is. Jay Crowder. We know what Jay Crowder brings. Defensive intensity. He, he Not the shooter necessarily, but he's a player that can fit into any scheme, into any rotation. He can play multiple positions. He's even played some small ball five at times, even though I know we want to get away from the small ball. And with Drummond being on the roster, it's not really, I don't think he's going to be needed to play small ball five. Well, that being said, we've seen Derrick Jones Jr. play small ball five. So if that happens, right, that it definitely could they could pivot towards Jay Crowder. Now, the thing that is the hangup in this and that I've said 
is that contract, right? Jay Crowder, a player that's on the back half of his career, you could technically get close to matching with Kobe White, throw in some other pieces. The Suns may be incentivized to take a younger guard in Kobe White as they look and whatever goes on with Chris Paul in the future, maybe get some influx of young talent that's under their control. They can match any salaries. There is an, a thought that that, that that could get it done. You can package in as well Tony Bradley's contract, which is non-guaranteed at this point. They can cut Tony Bradley if you trade him to the Suns at any time without really hitting a big type of, of, of cap hit for it. So that is definitely something that could happen, especially when you look at Jay Crowder and like what he brings, the defensive intensity, the, the toughness, the dog that we don't have. Now, he did hit the, the three last season. Um, no, it was 2020, 2021. He had 148 threes at a 38% clip. So there's some reason to believe that he could get back close to that just by the nature of how this offense runs. One, what's one thing that I always say? The, whoever plays the four in this offense is naturally going to get open corner threes just by the way the offense runs. So Jay Crowder is a pivot candidate for the Chicago Bulls. Who is another one? P.J. Washington is absolutely a candidate for the Chicago Bulls. Now, I don't know if necessarily the Charlotte Hornets are going to have him, but when you look at him, he fits their timeline. He's 24 years old. He, he, he can rebound uh, well. He can play the three, four, or five. And then especially if you look at if the Bulls do – which they will, I and mean, I think that they will, uh, hold on to Patrick Williams in a deal like this. P.J. Washington is a player that can play with Patrick Williams. He can back up Patrick Williams, Patrick Williams to back him up. There's a, there's, a, there's a lot of synergy there. When you look at the way and the play style that AK wants this team to run, switchable players. Uh, P.J. Washington, while not a great defender, he's not a horrible defender either. He has really good point of attack defense. Uh, P.J. Washington could come in and be that glue type guy for this team, somebody who can hit the three, somebody who can sh uh, shoot the ball overall, get to mid-range, pass pretty solidly, and play solid defense. Uh, P.J. Watson is absolutely a candidate if he if they decide to move on from him. Depending the fact that he's uh, approaching restricted free agency, and the Hornets seem to kind of be they're 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 kind of in the Victor Wimby on the sweet states, but not so. I don't know exactly what would get, take it to get it done. It's kind of hard to judge exactly what the Hornets would want in a P.J. Washington uh, type deal. But he is a player that I wouldn't mind the Bulls looking at if it comes to that. Um, so and if you look at P.J. Washington's numbers so far this season, he's averaging 15.7 uh, points per game. He's averaging uh, 4.7 rebounds, 2.4 assists right out of block per game. 15.7 points per game. He's shooting the ball at a 42% clip from the field, 34% from three-point range. He's taking five and a half three-pointers per game on average, which the Bulls could use another three-point shooter, somebody who's a threat to be out there to do that. And he's he's getting 32 minutes a game. Now, does he get that on the Chicago Bulls? I guess will remain to be seen. But again, P.J. Washington is a candidate I would absolutely love the Bulls to look at. And as a replacement for P.J. Uh, Washington, I'm going to throw in Harrison Barnes there. When you look at the way even that Harrison Barnes played against us, is he a long-term ploy or plan for the Chicago Bulls? No, but he is somebody that you could potentially bring in, take a look at um, extendedly for the rest of the season. Again, is he a buyout candidate? There's been some rumors and some talk to that as well, so I guess we'll see there. But just as a replacement for P.J. Washington, as a more realistic option, a, a player that's a little bit older, a veteran, I look at Harrison Barnes as well as a potential there. And then the last one. If the Bulls do completely decide to move on from Nikola Vucevic, they would need another center. And the center that I would, wouldn't mind them taking a look at and looking, again, not an ideal candidate. You would have to play a lot of, a lot of di uh, different ways, and this is somebody you guys ask about a lot, is Miles Turner. Again, Miles Turner, who's in the midst of having a career, career resurgence in a way for him. A player that also I think is a free agent at the end of this season. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong on that. I know you guys will. Uh, but with that being said, um, he's a player that you can look at to bring in Vooch. He a uh, uh, replace Vooch. Um, he is a better defender than Vooch. At least he's a better one on one defender than Vooch. As, is a, absolutely he blocks more shots than Nikola Vucevic. All those things, and because he's an unrestricted free agent coming up this up uh, this upcoming summer, the Pacers may look to move on from him. Not saying they necessarily will, considering they got Tyrese Halliburton. This team is playing, uh, the, the, they're playing pretty well right now. Not amazing or anything like that, but they are playing pretty well. Um, they could look to definitely uh, keep Miles Turner, much like most people expected Mo Bamba to kind of be gone from uh, the Orlando Magic, which I'm sure they wish they would have let him walk at this point. Uh, he ended up staying with that team. The Pacers right now, 13 and 12 on the season. They sit at the number six seed, but if they do decide to say, hey, 
We know what we have in this in this Tyrese Halliburton kid, but we wanted we wanted up our chances to up our up our draft status. They could absolutely look to trade Miles Turner, get a little worse, things like that. You have Ben Matherin there as well, who's going to be a big part of their future. If you can add a high draft pick to that, if they decide to tank again, the Bulls aren't sending any draft picks. They could look to move that deal, and they still could technically look to extend Vooch as well, a veteran player who could be somebody there who could start for them if they do get in that Victor Wimbiana sweepstakes while Wimbiana's figuring it out, play next to Wimbiana, we'll see. Um, so there's there's that type of option. Miles Turner, while I was extremely against him last season, I still think he's a black hole on offense. You would need a more solid passer out there because he's a terrible, terrible, terrible passer. There is some... There is something there that he could bring as well if they decide to move on from Nikola Vucevic. You guys already know one of the prospects that I would love the Bulls to look at as well as Jakob Porto, um, bringing him and um, and uh, Doug McDermott in by sending Vooch out if that's the route they choose to go. I think that would be an overall plus deal for the Bulls as well. There are some realistic trade uh, uh, opportunities and scenarios there for the Chicago Bulls, but I tell you what, a full blow it up rebuild is not it. But let me know what you guys think on everything down below. Make sure you're following the show at Bull Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, bullcentralpod at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text and our voicemail, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related because of you guys. Like I liked in every episode on, go Bulls. Love you guys. And peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of The Breaks Break, Break, Media. Media. Media.